This is Incredible Stories Podcast, Episode 7, Warrior Queens of Vietnam. Hello again, everyone. I'm Zane Wind. And I'm Josh Virla. Thank you so much for joining us again. We love having you. Zanios, what's what's going on? What's the good word? The good word, um, as I'm about to a little later today, I'm uh, going to do some uh, trivia with some friends and have some uh, pizza at my uh, friend's restaurant. So I'm excited about that. I haven't done uh, trivia in a bit, and that's always fun. Usually pretty hard. Um, well, your friend has a, a restaurant? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, he um he's a manager at this uh, pizza joint called Joe's Pizza in um, Alpharetta, Georgia. Huh. Um, and yeah, he, I mean he's pretty much like co-owner, and um really really glad for him because you know he's always been into the the food industry, and you know it seems like uh, this you know particular restaurant he's working at is uh, is doing well, and um, I'm excited to support his business and have some uh, good pizza, and hopefully. Win some cash money yeah. and some trivia. That's cool. I'll have to check I, that out when I'm up there. Yeah, sure. It's not. Yeah, it's not that far from you. Um, it's just up in Alpharetta. Yeah. So how's everything going on with you? Uh, pretty good. Just celebrated my one year anniversary. Oh so, yeah! Congratulations. Thank you. Again. Thank That's you. Awesome. Uh, you know, we made it. So you know, we're in it for the long haul, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like how in your Facebook status you're like, um, you know, I don't know who would be with me for a year, yeah. but uh, I love you and all that. So <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Did you guys do anything um, fun at all? I know it. I know you. Um, well, it, yeah. Just tell me what did you, you guys do? Uh, not yet. Well, we'll probably celebrate this weekend, but. Um, yeah, so because it was on a weekday, so it's just like, eh, we're tired. We don't want to go out. We're really romantic. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. You're perfect for each other. Oh, thank you. Uh, but Zane, ch- check it out. I got a math problem for you. Oh, God, math. Yeah, yeah math. You should like this. It's It, it seems pretty easy. Uh, what's one plus one? Uh, well, I'm pretty sure that's, uh, of course, two. Wrong. What, what? It's 120. <laughs> Ah, I got you now. <laughs> yes, headlines 120. And listeners, this is where Zane and I have 120 seconds to bring you some interesting news. And that's all we allow ourselves for each story. So Zane, mm-hmm. you're on the clock. Alrighty. Okay, so uh, NBA star Meta World Peace, that's his name, uh, claims ghosts touched him inappropriately. Of course. So, uh... Uh, Los, Los Angeles Lakers star Meta World Peace may have had good reason to feel spooked over this weekend. <laughs> he says ghosts were touching him in all the wrong places. Um, <laughs> the Lakers were playing in uh, – they were playing in uh, Oklahoma City to play the Thunder on uh, this past Saturday, and they stayed at the haunted Skirvin Hilton. Oh, I think I've heard of that hotel. Yeah, and especially on the 10th floor, um, you know – uh, NBA teams are, you know, sports teams, celebrities, they can stay there, but typically, you know, a lot of people try to avoid the 10th floor. But a few players, including Peace, decide to stay there. And so he said during his encounter, um, this was in his room on the 10th floor, the ghosts were all over me and I just accepted it. They touched me all over the place and, you know, I- I'm going to take one of the ghosts to court for touching me <laughs> in the wrong places. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and he, you know, it sounds like a che- cheeky quote, but he said he was serious. Um, and the reason why he didn't like run away or, you know, was scared, he just said, I was watching a good movie at the time. I was tired. I didn't want to, I want I didn't want to move. Uh, I was watching a George Clooney flick, Money Monster. Well, we'll have to leave so, it at that thing because that's I your mean, time. Okay. Just that's, that's uh, yeah, leave him know. hanging. It's funny. I, I don't know if it's true or not. <laughs> I just got to say, I don't know if it's true or not. So, very good. Very good. Go. That's, that's kind of funny. Um, all right, well, I guess I'll go now with my first one. Uh, Google's neural networks invent their own encryption. So, okay, you'll kind of like this, Zane, I guess, because uh, robots kind of creep you out, right? Uh, so Google's... Uh, I, they're interesting. Okay, but... well, yeah, they're interesting, but it's, it's kind of freaky. Um, but apparently Google has... Yeah, this... I guess it's starting, to get to, it's starting to get freaky with all the technology. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll check this out. Google has their... Um, has some supercomputers... And they set them up to where they have three computers. Uh, one's called Bob, and uh, one's called Alice, and the other one's called Eve. And they task them to communicate with each other, or at least two of the three of them to communicate with each other. 
and they said, and they told their you know computers, okay, you, Bob, you need to decipher Alice's text when she sends it to you with a, you know, with her encryption. So Alice has to encrypt the text to Bob and Bob has to uh, decipher that. And then Eve listens in and tries to crack that. Uh, but apparently they kind of developed their own method of encryption, although it's not very strong and pretty weak by our standards. Uh, it shows that computers are learning and they're doing this stuff on their own. Oh, God. Yeah, freaky, huh? Well, well, the end is nigh. It, it is that. And that, that my time is nigh, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Zane, you are up again. Alrighty. WikiLeaks documents reveal United Nations have interest in UFOs. So uh, lately we've been had a lot of uh, hacked emails released by WikiLeaks. That's their whole thing that they're into. And one thing that's actually, that might have been overlooked, you know, a lot of political stuff has been in the news. But uh, we, one of the WikiLeaks uh, emails relates to a topic that was released on May 18th, 2015. WikiLeaks posted more than a half a million U.S. State Department diplomatic documents from 1978 mm. detailing America's interactions with countries all around the world, including uh, Grenada, Prime Minister Eric Gehry's efforts to organize a United Nations-based committee to research and investigate global UFO reports. Many of the documents uh, written by American UN officials indicated how closely they were to monitoring Grenada's UFO-related activities. And so basically, uh, in these, like, cables released by WikiLeaks, um, there was discussion, like, committees, basically, Grenada was trying to form committees so people can look more into it. And it seems like other countries were kind of, like, you know, snooping, trying to, like, hey, what information are there about UFOs? Mm -hmm. So it, it's just kind of interesting that some countries more knowledgeable about it or some people want more knowledgeable but it seems like there's definitely international interest in whether ufos are true or not well absolutely and that's your time so uh, if there's any more interest in that uh listeners check out the links in the show notes all righty all right i guess i uh, guess i'm on the clock now scientists plan to create asgardia nation state in space oh okay did i jank one of yours did i gank no oh, no okay. Uh, so this group of scientists, um, they're launching what they say will be a new pacifist nation state in outer space. And they're going to call it Asgardia, like in the Norse uh, legends. Uh, but basically, they're, oh, yeah, they're planning course. to launch their first satellite late next year. And they hope the UN recognizes it. Uh, so their ultimate plan is to, <laughs> I guess, just have this like little space station up in space that's its own nation and that people can be members of it, even though they don't live there. They, they will live on, you know, Earth. Uh, <laughs> uh, some say this is kind of like a far-fetched idea and probably won't an amount to anything because it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. But it's kind of like a micro-nation, and, and that'd be an interesting topic for some other time, I'm sure. But uh, that's essentially what they want to do is make a micro-nation up in space. So, well, there you go. I'm sure, they'll, I'm sure all the elitists will probably want to get up there and, you know... Feel like they're like their own little overlord, you know? Oh yeah, I mean, I'll join, whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, that's me. Go ahead. Alrighty. Uh, panda fights off enclosure invading man at Chinese zoo. Um, so a visitor to a Chinese zoo was filmed climbing into a panda enclosure, and he started wrestling with the den's resident for about five minutes. Um, video shows um, a man identified only by the surname Chen. He walked through the panda exhibit and approached a 12-year-old male bear cub named uh, Mei Ling, mm -hmm. and he started waving at the animal. Uh, Chen fails to get a reaction from the panda, which, of course, was napping, and so he, <laughs> bon he bonked it on the head. Of course. <laughs> Mei Ling woke um, when he was touched, and he starts wrestling with the man for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't like um, you know any dangerous situation. It appears the panda was kind of playing um, uh, according to its behavior. But uh, Chen was kind of getting overmatched because this is a little big, big animal. And so he uh, runs out of the um, facility. He hasn't been charged of anything, but appears his motive for doing this was to impress two ladies of course. that were with him. <laughs> it always is, right? Uh, well, I guess if he hasn't seen Kung Fu Panda, he doesn't know the danger that, the, uh, that poses. But, you know, whatever. Apparently not. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a, that's a good story, Zane. I like that. Um, all right, so my final one. First known dinosaur brain fossil discovered 
Oh my god! Oh, cool. Y- yeah. So they say this. Uh, they found a fossilized brain of a dinosaur on a British beach, and uh, they estimated to be 133 million years old. How they know it's from a dinosaur? Uh, <laughs> I don't know how they could possibly the size know that. of a, a peanut, maybe. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit bigger than like if you put a penny next to it. Uh, I don't. Know, it's about half the size of your cell phone, I guess. Wow. Uh, but they say it's from the a uh, relative of the iguanodon, uh, which you know that dinosaur kind of looks like it's giving a thumbs up all the time. Um, and how they would know that, I have no idea. It doesn't mm-hmm. seem like like how do they know it's not from a whale? <laughs> it's a fossilized whale brain, you know. But anyway, so scientists said, uh, yeah, this looks pretty neat, and it's intriguing to a lot of the the people who study that. Uh, But they're kind of skeptical in the community, but they're hoping that it's such a sensational claim that they will um, get a lot of research into it early on, and they can figure out if it's actually a dinosaur brain. So that's um, that's where they're at with that. But you know how it formed, they say, it formed in a, a low oxygen a water environment and it and uh, but it was acidic it was like in an acidic pond and it pickled the brain so it, it no, preserved right. it to get um fossilized better pickled dino brain mm, interesting tasty. sounds delicious yes Alrighty, well excellent headlines for today but let's get at it so josh i'm guessing we are going to be talking about some interesting uh vietnamese women uh that's correct zane but not just interesting incredible oh yes 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 i have for you two badass sisters who led a rebellion against the chinese and set up their own kingdom mulan who <laughs> but i'm getting ahead of myself a bit so why don't you just ruminate whilst i illuminate uh nice rhyming there genie uh, go right ahead <laughs> I'm not going to sing that for you, but all right. I wish. Well, Zane and listeners, let's take a journey all the way back to around 12 to 14-ish AD. Uh, the dates are kind of fluid because no one really knows the exact dates of uh, these sisters' births. Uh, and, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, and the sisters, and, you know, again, this is like a lot of Vietnamese names, so I'm going <laughs> to butcher them horribly, I'm sure. Godspeed. Thank you. Uh, but the sisters are named Trung Trok and Trung Ni. Okay? Ugh. Now... They're not, not very pretty names, but, you know... Well, in Vietnam, they're, they're very beautiful. Uh, but but the sisters were born around this time in the Giao Shai Commandery. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> the incorrect way to say it, but we'll, we'll go with that. But um, they were born in this commandery, and, and the commandery is kind of like an administrative area. Uh, okay. And this location was located in what is now known as northern Vietnam. Now, what do you mean um, administrative, exactly? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I'm kind of kind of like, you know, um, how governments set up things. Like, we live in a county, okay. you know, like that. It's just, it's under the rule of... Okay, some, just kind of a government Yeah, it's just, a, it's a bureaucratic way to okay. separate things. Okay, gotcha. So, so now this area was under the rule of the Chinese Han Dynasty. And, and China had been ruling over what is now Vietnam for about 150 years at this point in our story. Uh, and, and that's 150 years into a thousand year, uh, a thousand years of China's rule over this area. So we have Trung Truk, who is the eldest sister, and Trung Ni, uh, and she's the youngest sister. Now, now just to mention real quick, Zane and listeners, uh, about Vietnamese naming conventions. Mm-hmm. In Vietnam, they typically put the family name first, and the middle, then the middle name, okay. and then their first name. So in American names, it would be like Roosevelt Delano Franklin, right? <laughs> but uh, that's how they do it over there. And in uh, Vietnamese culture, uh, usually okay. usually women... Wind Andrew Zane. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that kind of sounds kind of cool. Sounds like some sort of anime character. Yeah, you'd go by wind. <laughs> well, uh, only sometimes. I'm not going to get into all their customs and how they talk to people and when they use names in certain ways, but just know that women usually keep their family names when they marry. So, okay, back to the gals. Okay, very cool. Now, their father was a a prefect of the rural district Mei Lin. And a prefect is kind of like a governor or chief officer of a region. 
So they were in a pretty well-to-do family. Cons- it's not a really good student at Hogwarts, you mean? <laughs> no, it's not. No, is that... What is that? <laughs> a perfect, a prefect. Oh, well... They were really yeah. good students at a Hogwarts. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I wasn't that into Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. Dumbledore dies. Spoiler. <laughs> okay. Oh, no! God, all right. So, all right, so they were, you know, they were in a pretty well-to-do family, considering, you know, the time frame. Uh, now, at this point of time in Vietnam, and I'm going to call this region Vietnam throughout the story, just because... Even though it wasn't technically Vietnam at that time, it was it was what we know as Vietnam now. Okay. So society was largely a matriarchal society, meaning women took the lead and were actually allowed to be in charge of things. So kind of ahead of their time in this culture, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. So during this time, uh, the women being ahead of their times uh, in terms of freedom, saying. Uh, they were allowed to do things like inherit property, be political leaders, traders, judges, and even warriors. Oh, wow. Uh, of course, later, Chinese would influence Vietnam, so a lot of these freedoms for women were suppressed, and the matriarchal slant was replaced with a patriarchal point of view, if that makes sense. So basically, they were like, mm-hmm. women bad, men good. But that took a little bit of time. So this was, uh, this was before um, you know China really took over. This matriarchal society was in place, but then mm-hmm. and China came in. Correct. And they were trying to. I got you. Yeah. So you know, back to their father. Now, being in the high status role that he was in, you know, he was able to teach his daughters things that might not have been available to more of the peasant class. So their their father taught them martial arts. And, you know, that would have been important in a house of his stature because, you know, that was like a high-class thing to do, perform martial arts. Also educated his daughters on warfare and other, you know, other things that people normally wouldn't have been educated on back in the day, uh, depending on their class, because they are upper society, remind you. However, being under the rule of China was less than favorable for the local people, and how they did things was, this is China, how China did things when they would take over an area was they would kind of force their culture onto people and make them adopt their culture and and do things the way they do, they would do things so as you can imagine mm-hmm. that would rub people the wrong way and eventually a rumblings they are started <laughs> uh, by many by, by many accounts china was cruel and treated the people of the region poorly okay so they grew up in this environment that was you know, kind of repressive because of China, you know, being over the region and, and imposing their will on the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even in this shaky environment, Trock, the older sister, she found love. Aww. Love! <laughs> Brings us together. Uh, she, <laughs> she found love in the form of her father's doctor's son. Uh, uh, his name was Tai Sak, I, I believe. <laughs> Um, so, so they married, but they were subjected to the greed and suppression of the Chinese governor named To Din. So, uh, such a such a t- scary name, To Din. Well, a lot of it's how I said it. You know, if I would have been like To Din, it would sound very nice. <laughs> Sounded like come in. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but this guy, he he's like what rebellions are made of, right? So by many accounts, he would take bribes, he raised taxes, you know, on salt. And if you remember from our History's Blingiest episode, salt was kind of a big deal back in, back in this time. Uh-huh. Uh, but, but he also would tax the peasants to fish in the rivers. So, you know, it's <laughs> like people are getting it from all ends from this guy. I was like, dude, dude, just let us live life and you can't even fish in the rivers? Like, that's, that's kind of messed up. <laughs> So, greedy government fat cats, man. Always ruining things. Yes, he was. Uh, So, but apparently, Tai Suk stood up to the Chinese overlord, along with his wife, Truk. All right? So, what they were trying to do, Tai and Truk, is they were trying to rally the nobles of this area, the the local, the Vietnamese uh, nobles. But the Chinese were like, nah, son. We're going to make it. Was was that a name of someone? Oh, you said Nah (laughs) Sun. Got it. Okay. All right. Got it. Sorry. I'm getting confused with all the silly names. A lot of names. Uh, Not silly, Zane. They are appropriate for their region and culture. Be sensitive. Okay. 
Uh, nah. So the Chinese are like, nah, son. We're, there you go. We're gonna we're gonna make an example out of you. So they <laughs> killed him and hung his body at the gates uh, in front of the city, so as to send a message to the conspirators and would be conspirators. So they were like, hey, you guys act up. This was gonna happen to you. Interestingly, though, Zane, the Chinese records do mention Trak is having a brave and fearless disposition. So, what did Trak do? Roll over and take it? Go out of the country and fade away? Hell no! This wouldn't be incredible stories if she did, son! Yeah. Check this out, Zane. Not to let her husband's death to be in vain, she used it as a rallying cry and she led the people in her village to expel the Chinese from there. Now, it wasn't a big contingency of the Chinese. It was like a small military unit, maybe like a platoon size. I don't know. I would guess 30 people. Uh I couldn't find any numbers on that, but that's fairly small. That sounds about right. Yeah, so it was like a little outpost that they had people there. But still, pretty cool victory. But we ain't done yet. Now, with momentum gaining from that, Track and her sister got the local lords, the non-Chinese ones, of course, to join them. But how, you may ask? How? Yes, how. The people were both fearful of the Chinese and not confident they could beat them. So how could these two women convince them? Well, according to some legends, by putting their big girl panties on and doing stuff like, I don't know, killing a man-eating tiger that locals were scared of, Oh, damn. Yeah. Now, they then used that tiger skin and wrote on it a note encouraging the people to rise up with them against the Chinese. Now, I don't know what the note said, but the note probably went something like this. Sister Nay! Yes, Sister Trock? Do you have a tiger skin? Yes. I had it work so it'd be like paper. Very pretty, strong, and fierce. Good. Please write this down. Dear b- what the f- is wrong with you? My sister and I just killed this f***ing tiger. What do you fear of the Chinese that you do not fear us? We will turn you into paper just like this tiger if you don't collectively grow a pair and follow us into battle. Got it, sis. Oh, wait. What if we add this part, too? Also to the men who it may concern, if you are unwilling to fight us, please hand over your penises so that we may use them to slap our enemies. P.S. Your girlfriends left their shirt at my house last night. LOL. I like it. Make sure to add a little smiley face picture and a picture of an ice cream cone at the end and send. I got it. Uh, What's an ice cream cone? Well, whatever was in that note seemed to work. So around 40 AD, the sisters managed to raise an army of, get this now, 80,000 people. And a lot of them were women. Yeah, I know. Right? And that's huge. So, and, and Jeez. Uh, because a lot of women were in their army, they actually handpicked 36 women, including their own mother, to be generals in their army. So, remember, now remember, they were trained in martial arts and studied warfare, so they used their knowledge to pass down to the people uh, how to fight. So, you know, as you can imagine, a lot of, 80,000 people are a lot of people to train. That's probably why they had 36 generals, so they could teach the generals, and then the generals could teach their people, and so on down the line. And that way you can get, you know, training, um, training that many troops, you know, quickly done. So, in the next few months, right, the Trung sisters managed to reclaim slash liberate 65 Chinese-held citadels. Uh, This was an amazing feat, to be sure. I know, 65. Not 64. 65. (laughs) So, but, but yeah, that's an incredible feat just, you know, right there. Now, it is said that Ni, the youngest sister, was the better warrior. Ni! But to me, it appears track... Uh, to be the better leader, as she was the one kind of rallying people the most and and informing the alliances to get people on board, right? So, upon capturing re- or retaking the 65 Chinese-held citadels, 
uh, that meant they pretty much liberated a kingdom called Nanye or Nanyu. <laughs> my my Vietnamese. <laughs> <laughs> Quite all right, John. So, but but this kingdom, this kingdom of Nanye covered portions of southern China and a lot of northern Vietnam. It was essentially proto-Vietnam. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. It, it was. It had the same footprint of a lot of what Vietnam is currently today. Okay. So, after this victory, people made Trung Truc the ruler of this kingdom. But I saw in most accounts that they ruled as co-queens. Although, it seems to me Truc was the brains of the whole organization. So, I'm sure, as she was the eldest sister, she was the one in real charge. But, uh, neat, good job. Still up there on the totem pole, you know? I, I wouldn't want to mess with either either of them. No, no, absolutely not. Girl power, like, definitely. Girl power. Yeah. <laughs> so, for the next three years, these two warrior queens defended their territory against the Chinese and tried ruling as they saw fit, because that's what you do when you're, you know, the queens of a kingdom or queendom. Ah, yes, ah, yeah. yes. So, so this included part of their ruling, uh, getting rid of, uh, of tribute, which is paying money to rulers as a sign of submission. And they also were big into simplifying the overly bureaucratic Chinese form of government. So uh, no more getting taxed for fishing, right? Yeah, no more getting taxed for fishing and no more of villages, you know, sending up gold because... You know, they're, yeah, that's kind of what tribute was like, hey, oh, you're ruling me. Oh, here's a, here's a case full of gold every month. Thanks mm-hmm. for being such nice rulers. <laughs> but um, she, she got rid of that, and they didn't like all the bureaucracy, um, as the Chinese were known to do, you know, with all their prefectures and commanderies and stuff like that. They were just like, nah, we'll just get rid of a lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So it seems pretty good, but... The almost constant battles with the Chinese proved overwhelming, as the sisters couldn't manage to keep up with the Chinese military superiority or compete with their wealth. So you meant China, a much bigger, more powerful country, right? Mm -hmm. So in 43 AD, the sisters were defeated. Finish them! Finish them! Yeah, that was much better than mine. (laughs) (laughs) I love those video games, sorry. Yeah, they are good. Fatality. Fight. So, in 43 AD, more than 10,000 of their soldiers surrendered, and thousands more were captured and beheaded by the Chinese. Whoops. But not the Trung sisters. Nah. Surrender was not in their vocabulary, and it reflected in their SATs. <laughs> <laughs> they were smart. They were, they were incredibly intelligent, yeah. But they took the road more honorable according to Vietnamese beliefs, uh, which is, of course, suicide. And, you know, accounts vary, but from what I read, um, some say they drowned themselves in a river, and others say they simply got sick and died, Oregon Trail style. (laughs) Uh, Still, another account said that they just floated up into the clouds. Aliens? (laughs) No, not aliens. Well, yeah, maybe. I hope so. But my money is on the suicide thing. Mm. Was uh, the common thing uh, for uh, uh, suicide in uh, Vietnamese culture, was that kind of similar to, you know, what's, you know, known a lot, like in Japanese culture, how they mm-hmm. would kind of, you know, stab themselves to death. Like, was that kind of a common thing in, in the whole a- Asian continent, really? Yeah, well, I think back in this time frame, and not just in Asia, but other cultures had it too. Like, they, you'd rather be killed by your own hands than by the enemy, you know? Right, right. Uh, but it's, you know, it more was seen honor. as a great honor for... Right, yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, hey, you know, I'm just going to finish myself off before you can and then you know i'm not going to give you the satisfaction but but also too i think um you know they probably would have been tortured or something by the chinese oh, yeah. oh, if sure, they caught, yeah. and i'm sure they don't want to be beheaded you know no, and, and impaled which happened a lot back then too so but this time in vietnam in vietnam history was a mere blip in the near thousand year reign of china over this region And although they accomplished an incredible feat kicking Chinese ass and establishing their own queendom, I'd say their greatest contribution to Vietnam followed, you know, after their death. Uh, Being such significant cultural heroes, the Trung sisters were used as kind of the ideal image of patriotism and courage, especially in the face of fighting against the Chinese and later the French. 
Okay. But yeah, but their their legend only grew in the centuries after their deaths, and temples were built and dedicated to them. And every February, their deaths are celebrated as a national holiday in Vietnam. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Their lives are a national symbol of Vietnam, and in many ways, larger than just being two rebellious sisters, they are a cry to shame men to be better. Huh. And they are especially revered by the women in Vietnam, who have oft struggled for equality you know, up until this day. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Zane, what do you think of these two badass chicks? Ah, well, I mean, very impressive. It is definitely um, something, you know, I did not know much about, um, especially, you know, Vietnamese history. Just, I mean, of course, you know, in America, we were very familiar with uh, recent history with uh, Vietnam, of course, the Vietnam War. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I know, um, you know, the Chinese uh, might back in you know thousands of years ago was huge and it makes sense that they had covered uh, vietnam and took over but i didn't know about this uh revolution caused by these uh two sisters and it, you know actually it kind of reminded me of how um they were able to raise an army and it was made up of uh, a lot of women um just the the rarity rarity of it actually reminded me of our first episode uh the sacred band of thebes how oh, yeah. you had um an all 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 manned uh band but they were all gay and just because it's just so different than the usual type of armies and revolutions Mm -hmm. that we we know of and throughout history so i thought that was pretty cool and i like the you know there's a little bit of a similarity there and um it was really impressive it's it's definitely not your uh your typical uh disney mulan tale you know oh that's true although i would like to see a disney movie about these two sisters i think it'd be really awesome kind of like Better than Frozen, because everyone was like, oh, Frozen's so empowering to girls, but like, this, these girls are empowering, good lord. I don't know, I think, I think, I think it would be good just to see, like, you know, a live action, because, I mean, I think Mm -hmm. Disney, they got Mulan, I think that's good enough for them, but, um, you know, for the female empowerment, like, uh, you know, um, thing for coming from an Asian perspective, but I think this would be pretty cool to see a live action. Oh, yeah, definitely, I mean, I'd pay to see that. Um, you know, I, I did find interesting uh, as well with this is is kind of the underlying tone of them being cultural heroes in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. And, and I touched on it briefly on how they're they're kind of used as shame men in Vietnam huh. nowadays. It's, it's it's kind of it's more so like, oh look, you need to be you know brave like these women. It, it's more so like, you guys suck. If these lowly women are getting up and doing the job that you guys should be doing. That's pretty pathetic. So it's uh-huh. it's kind of like from that point of view, like you guys are letting girls do this. Like mm-hmm. they girls suck, and you guys are better. Like that's where it's, their angle is on it, mm-hmm. um, which is you know kind of kind of interesting. But oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you think about like cultural heroes like that. I mean, I guess America doesn't really have things you know quite like that. I mean, we have like. The Revolutionary War, you know, heroes and, and idealized mm-hmm. like Was- George Washington and, mm-hmm. you know, some of those early guys. But I, I don't feel they're they're the rallying point for for patriotism as it used to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and these women seem like they're still still the bee's knees for for Vietnam, you know. I feel like the only like it's more of like a symbolic um like female empowerment, uh, revolutionary type of symbol was kind of like Rosie the Riveter, um, mm-hmm. at World War II. Um, I felt like, you know, come on, women, come together, you know, and support our boys, support our country, um, and all that. I feel like that's the only thing I can really think of, um, you know, um, but, uh, as a, as an equivalent. But, um, yeah, that'd be, I mean, maybe in the future, maybe U.S. will have, like, you know, some really, um, just empowering women that lead mm-hmm. us through some crisis or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's only been symbolic for the U.S., but Vietnam obviously had a really, really cool historic uh, era with these uh, two ladies. Yeah, absolutely. And, well, you know, America does have some badass women in their, their history, though, Zane. We, we should cover them for some future stories. Oh, sure. But uh, as, of, as of right now, you know what we should be covering? Uh, haikus. That is right. Haikus are on the menu. So, Zane, how many you got today? I got three. All right. Well, you know what? You you go ahead. You take you take the floor. But wait, first, let me insert the music. All right. Trung Track and Trung Ni, badass fighter queens of Nam, made Mulan look weak. 
Ooh, them fighting words, Zane. You're going to piss off some Mulan fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some Disney fans, too. Like, yeah, that's, uh, I don't know. That might be even worse to piss off some Disney uh, Disney uh, fans, oh, for yeah. sure. No, no doubt. Well, let me save you by going into my haiku. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Two sisters of lore beat back the Chinese armies, Vietnam heroes. Nice, nice. Yes. It, it went simple. You almost sound like you were gonna try to do a rhyme with it too. I don't know. I was kind of ready for it, but you know. Yeah, usually I do, but I, I couldn't. I couldn't work it in that one. Yeah, that's all right. Alrighty. Don't mess with the Trung gals, famed chicks of the Vietnamese. Now I want pho soup. <laughs> Anytime I hear Vietnamese, I think Vietnamese pho soup. Okay. Nothing like uh, delicious. Some, yeah, I guess it's pretty good. I mean, I, I've had it before. I, it's all right as long as they don't put cilantro in it. Uh, oh, you're one of those people. Yeah, cilantro is amazing. I'm sorry if your your uh, DNA messes with you or whatever. <laughs> damn it. You know, just because I'm superior alien DNA that is sensitive to cilantro doesn't uh, mean. No, <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's a recessive gene. <laughs> recessive to when aliens bred us. Yes. <laughs> all right, all right, my second one, Zane. What can you say, girls? This army needs no misters. We got Trung sisters. Nice, nice. I like it. Alrighty. Uh, warrior Trung girls fought bravely in Vietnam, including Forrest Gump. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. Tom Hanks in there again. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering how he was going to get squeezed into he this snuck episode. snuck in. He snuck in. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Uh, all right. I like it. Um, all right. My final one. You fight like a girl. Thank you. I will cut your throat. Sad. You fight like boy. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Badass so, chicks, so going, man. Yeah. Going back to like, you know, kind of the shaming the guys, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> you know, they suck. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Well, that's our show again. Thank you guys so much for listening. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, make sure to follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. Our handle is at IncredPod. Um, also, uh, check out our site, IncrediblestoriesPodcast.com. Um, you can send us an email on there. And yeah, and then our haikus. Send us haikus. Send us haikus. Uh, we definitely want to see your creativity. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also feel free to send them for any show. You know, It doesn't have to be for just this one. Oh yeah, and and make sure to tell um tell us how bad our pronunciations are on names and cities that are foreign to us. <laughs> our pronunciation, our accents, you know, go ahead, just make fun of us hardcore. We're ready. Yeah, I can take it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> check check us out on iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, please uh, feel free to give us a rating. We'd love some five stars. Five stars, and we're also on YouTube as well. For Incredible Stories podcast, I'm Josh, and I'm Zane. And remember, the journey of a thousand tales begins with the first word. Have a good week, guys. Good